Hello, my name is Alexandra Novoselov. I am a research associate at Paris II University and a non-resident senior fellow at the International Peace Institute in New York. I led the EPON team looking at the effectiveness of the UN stabilization mission in the Congo. And that was in, in 2018, 2019. The members of my team were Aaron Pangburn from the Social Sciences Research Council in New York, Adriana Abdenour from the Igarape Institute in Brazil, and Thomas Mandrup from the Royal Danish Defense College and the Stellenbosch University in South Africa. We undertook the research trip at the end of July 2018, going to Kinshasa, Goma, Bunya, and Bukavu. The report was written before the general elections that took place in December uh, 2018. And um, the report was um, finalized uh, and published in April 2019. So the report does not therefore talk about the transition between Joseph Kabila and Felix Tshisekedi, even though it alludes to it as a number of interlocutors told us that after 20 years, it was time for MONUSCO to go. Some interlocutors even argued that after 20 years, the presence of the UN peacekeeping mission weakens the state. The longer the mission stays, the more it helps to absolve the national authorities from the responsibilities of maintaining law and order, of improving the living conditions of the population and of addressing the root causes of the conflict. Looking at the UN mission in the Congo in the long term, over its 20 years of existence, with a lot of hiccups along the way, the report has identified a number of strategic impacts and of strategic constraints faced by the mission. The first area in which MONUC um, and MONUSCO had a strategic impact is in its contribution towards the reunification of the country. In short, as one African diplomat put it, if the UN mission had not existed, most probably DRC would not have existed in its current form. MONUC and MONUSCO had also a strategic impact in preventing a recurrence of a major violent conflict in using its presence to enable other international and national actors, including the private sector, to provide services and to stimulate the local economy and through its contribution over the years to democratic politics. The role of MONUC and MONUSCO has also been critical in observing, reporting and collecting and sharing information, which was subsequently used by the International Criminal, Criminal Court to prosecute a number of warlords. In general, the instances of success achieved by MONUC and MONUSCO, along with the FARDC in reducing the military strength and capabilities of, of some armed groups, have involved using a combination of military pressure and soft tools such as political dialogue, disarmament, demobilization, repa repatriation, reintegration, and resettlement, and repatri repatriation to home countries. Today, while remaining armed groups uh, are present in Eastern uh, DRC uh, and do pose a threat to the local population, they may no longer constitute an international or regional threat. Due to the work of MONUC and MONUSCO, FRRDC has vastly improved its methods for identifying child soldiers and no, and no longer recruits them. This is one of the longer uh, term successes for uh, the mission. These achievements were done despite a number of strategic constraints, such as the diminishing degree of cooperation of the host state, in particular, 
between 2011 and 2018. The role of neighboring states fueling instability. It is clear that the continued support provided by uh, states in the region to illegal armed groups in the DRC has often undermined the implementation of the mission mandate. And the absence of a champion for Monarch and MONUSCO in the Security Council in order to leverage a commonly agreed blueprint for dealing with the conflict in a comprehensive fashion. The mission has also faced a number of operational constraints, such as the eternal operation, operational and tactical challenges of not having adequate means and capacities to fulfill the mission, of having contingents unwilling to execute the given mandate, and of having poor leadership as well as poor pre or in mission training. The problem of multiple interpretations of what peacekeeping is and of, and of what the mandate of the mission is. The lack of strategic communications uh, strategy to counter misunderstandings and sous-entendu and to explain the mandate and the mission to the Congolese people or even internally. As a result, MONUSCO's effectiveness in protection of civilians has varied widely across both pay, space and time, and has produced a mixed record. The effective implementation of a protection strategy cannot be separated from the active engagement of the host government in reforming its security institutions to support appropriate disarmament and reconciliation strategies. The resistance to reform has been one of the greater constraints on MONUSCO in terms of the supporting role it should play and the exit strategy it needed to envisage. A number of interlocutors considered that MONUSCO should have stronger partnerships with local society and that it could use political engagement and be a coordinator but both partners should be responsible for implementation. The mission was most successful when there was an alignment of political will among the Congolese government, the UN, the region and partners, especially uh, during uh, the transition period um, that occurred uh, in 2006 and during the early uh, phase of the Force Intervention Brigade. And uh, the mission was less successful when this political alignment was weak. Mobilizing these kinds of political alliance is key to mission success, success and is a constant challenge for any uh, peacekeeping operation. Misunderstandings over the role and mandate of the Force Intervention Brigade has also had an impact on the overall effectiveness of the UN mission. As it faced after its initial success against the M23, a number of operational and political challenges, such as operational inadequacy for jungle warfare or for fighting a strategic asymmetric enemy, the lack of uh, headquarters capacity, the lack of integration with the rest of MONUSCO's contingents and operational uh, and by being operationally spread out. Ultimately, the support of the FIB's own TCCs has wavered over time, showing that robustness is as closely linked to political will and interest as it is to military capacity. Since the release of the EPON report in April 2019 on the effectiveness of MONUSCO, the uh, national context in uh, DRC has changed and with it 
the attitude of the host state towards the UN mission. Congolese President Felix Tshisekedi has acknowledged the work of the UN mission and shown that he sees MONUSCO as a partner that seeks um, and seeks its support in a number of er areas in order to stabilize further its country. As we have underlined in the report, the attitude of the host state is key to the way the UN mission will be able or not to implement its mandate. 